Long years ago, we made a trip with destiny, and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not only or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. Hello? Yes, this is Cyril John Radcliffe. A poem by W. H. Auden about me. Hm. Why don't you ring back in a couple of hours? Goodbye. Antonia, that was a journalist. Apparently W. H. Auden has written a poem about me and it's in the paper. This is a great honour. Have you read it? Darling, come and sit down. I have read it. It's, it's not a nice poem. It's not a kind poem. Oh, dear. His gadgets are getting worse. I, I can't read it. The print is just too small. Would you mind reading it for me? Unbiased. At least he was when he arrived on his mission. Having never set eyes on the land, he was called to partition between two peoples fanatically at odds with their different diets and incompatible gods. Time, they had briefed him in London, is short. It's too late for mutual reconciliation or rational debate. The only solution now lies in separation. We can give you four judges, two Muslim and two Hindu, to consult with, but the final decision must rest with you. He got down to work the task of settling the fate of millions. The maps at his disposal were out of date. And the census returns almost certainly incorrect. But there was no time to check them. No time to inspect contested areas. The weather was frightfully hot and about... But in, te but in seven weeks it was done. The frontiers decided... Is something not right there? Did you skip a line or something? The weather was frightfully hot, and a bout of dysentery kept him constantly on the trot. <laughs> Go on. But in seven weeks it was done. The frontiers decided. A continent for better or worse divided. The next day he sailed for England where he could quickly forget the case as a good lawyer must. Return he would not, afraid, as he told his club, that he might get shot. This is what I'll be remembered for. The Radcliffe line. <laughs> Dickie told me to draw the line before the Sikhs find out to split Punjab before they knew what we were doing. Yes, this was all Dickie's fault. Gerald was right about Dickie. You remember what he said? Lord Mountbatten, you are so crooked. If you swallowed a nail, you'd shit a corkscrew. Huh. I said to Dickie, this is a ridiculous idea. I just don't have the time. Nero, Jinnah, Patel. Well, they all told me they wanted partition by the 15th of August, so I drew them alive. Yes, it was a ridiculous idea. How could you decide? There is East Pakistan. Then there is West Pakistan, and with India between one country with another country in the middle of it. I, I, I said to the Lord Chancellor, why me? I'm just a lawyer. I've never been to India. He said, do it in the service of your country. Well, I couldn't say no to my country, could I? Of course you couldn't. England was bankrupt. We had to get out of India fast. I had to get the job done. This is not my fault. Well, he did refuse the three thousand pounds. You gave it back just when we needed it most. You gave it back. Well, no one's going to remember that. No mention of that in the poem.
told you. I'm almost blind now. But I was blind then. This was one country, one heart cut into two. And I met the Mahatma. He told me, Cyril, this partition is going to create a lot of violence. And he talked to me about Ahimsa. Non-violence. Of course there was going to be violence. That's why I left. A day after I drew the line. I left. This bloody line. Yes, that's what it is. This bloody line. And he was right. Imagine. Someone drawing a line down the middle of his home. This living room. You're sitting over there. I'm sitting over here. And someone draws a line right down the middle. The line divides us. In that case, darling, I should come to your side, shouldn't I? Thank you.